guys, okay, we're going to start back at chapter 11 because this is the last part I read when I did the read aloud with the whole class, but I think my mic was going in and out. So here we go. Serafina had to remind herself to keep breathing, to stay calm. She felt her chest tightening, her breaths getting shorter and shorter. She wanted to turn and run, but she stayed and watched, her curiosity too strong to overcome. She crept quietly through the graveyard to get a closer look. She feared it might be a corpse crawling out of the ground. She imagined its rotting white hands digging through the dirt as it broke the surface. But as she got closer, she realized it wasn't a corpse at all, but a very living creature. It was some sort of wild, small wildcat with a yellowish brown fur, black spots and markings, and a long tail. It took her several seconds to figure out that it was a baby mountain lion. Suddenly, a second lion cub appeared. They charged each other, grabbing each other with their paws and tumbling in play, meowing and howling and swarting each other. They had the most adorable little yellow faces marked with black streaks and spots and long white kitty whiskers. Smiling, Serafina watched the cubs play in the bright green grass of the stone angel's sunlit glade. The fear she had felt just moments before began to melt away. She had always loved kittens. She crouched down and moved a little closer. One of the cubs spotted her. Its ears perked up and it stared at her, studying her. She thought that it would run away in fear, but it didn't. It gave her a raspy meow and ambled toward her as if it didn't have a care in the world. She extended her arm, holding her hand still. The brave little cub slowed down, but it kept coming toward her watching her, inching closer and closer. When it reached her, it sniffed her fingers and rubbed the side of its mouth along the length of her hand. Serafina smiled, almost giggled, pleased that the cub did not fear her. She sat down in the grass and the cub climbed right into her lap, pawing playfully at her fingers. She wrapped her arms around the cub and hugged its warm, fuzzy little body to her chest. It was good to have some company that didn't scare the living daylights out of her. The other cub came over and soon she was loving on both of them as they tumbled and rolled around her and they rubbed themselves against her and purred. What are you sweet little babies doing here? She asked. After all she'd been through, it felt more agreeable to be accepted by these wonderful little creatures. It felt like a homecoming. Soon they were all up and about. She chased the cubs around the glade pretending to swat at them with her paw. Then they chased her. She got down on her hands and knees. One of the cubs ran behind the pedestal of the stone angel, came around the other side and peeked at her, his dark little eyes blinking as he pretended to stalk her. He darted out playfully, running sideways with his back arched into a mock attack as he left, leapt upon her. Then the other cub joined in, grabbing her arms and legs, trying to tackle her and soon they were all brawling and growling. The adorable kittenish attack made Serafina laugh out loud, and her laughter carried through the misty forest. She kept playing and wrestling with the cubs, feeling a pure and oblivious childlike pleasure that she hadn't felt in a long time. Then she sensed severe and immediate danger. She turned and saw something hurling toward her out of the mist. At first, it seemed to be floating like a ghost, but then she realized it wasn't a ghost at all. It was running fast, straight towards her. A wave of dread washed through her as she realized that by playing with these cubs, she'd made a terrible, terrible error in judgment. The angry, full-grown mother mountain lion charged toward her. The lioness would kill her to defend her cubs. Fear jolted Serafina into motion. The lioness kept through, leapt through the air, her claws and teeth bared. Serafina knew she was going to die, but she tried to duck. The impact of the lioness's attack slammed into her so hard that it knocked her off her feet. She and the vicious beast tumbled across the grass in a brawling, snarling mass of hissing teeth and claws. Serafina battled with all her strength. She had never in her life fought anything so physically powerful. She knew that there was no way to defeat her. 
She was but a kitten compared to this wild beast. Her only hope was to get away as fast as she could. She kicked her feet and flailed her wrist. She beat the lioness with a stick, screaming all the while. When the lioness tried to bite her neck and deliver her deadly blow, Serafina slammed her hands into the lioness's face and tore at her eyes and then whirled herself into a wild, twisting frenzy. Her attacks distracted the big cat just long enough to break herself free. Then she sprang up and darted away like a scalded dog. The lioness chased her, but Serafina sprinted with an incredible burst of fear and due speed. She scrambled into the thick bushes like a squirrel and just kept running. She ran and she ran. She ran until her whole chest hurt with thumping pain. She crossed a rocky stream, then went through a thick stand of pines, and then delved into a thicket of thistles and blackberry thorns. She climbed up hills and over rocks and just kept running as far as she could. Finally, exhausted, she ducked beneath a bush like a rabbit and listened for the sounds of her pursuer. She didn't hear her. She imagined that the lioness, satisfied that she had chased off the intruder, had returned to her cubs. She could picture the mother lion scolding them for playing with a stranger and pushing them angrily back into their den beneath the roots of the tree. Panting and wounded, Serafina pressed on through the forest, determined to put as much distance as possible between her, the cemetery, and the mountain lion's den. She vowed to never return to that terrifying place. When she finally stopped for a moment to catch her breath, she looked around her. Nothing looked familiar. It was then that she realized that she was completely and utterly lost. That's the end of that chapter. Chapter 12. We'll get started on that one in just a few minutes.